And one of the ways that you've been, I, I think, very effective in conveying the broad appeal and applicability of customer equity isn't only to look within the marketing discipline and look at the kind of data and reporting structures that, that a marketing professor like myself would know, but you spend a lot of time looking at and talking to uh, people in accounting. So as you understand where these kinds of metrics would fit with more traditional accounting metrics. Can you talk about some of those cross-disciplinary aspects about winning the, the, the attention, the respect of, of, of folks outside of marketing? Well, what we did, uh, one argument that, uh, that we frequently hear is, uh, for example, if we would report too many metrics to the financial markets, we essentially would provide too many information to the competitors, and the competitors would take up and might be even more successful because they know so much about our company. Well, of course, that might be a good argument. So what we did, we looked at the disclosure of uh, financial statements, in particular the customer metrics in there, First, what we observe is a huge heterogeneity of firms. There are some firms who report a lot of metrics, and there are others who hardly report any customer metrics. So there's a huge difference there. But what we can show is that those who report more metrics are actually outperforming. Outperforming in a sense that their stock prices increase more strongly. And at the same time, they provide more information to the analysts and the analysts themselves, they could come up with much better forecasts about what's going on with that company. So I mean, essentially, in a nutshell, we could show that those companies who report more metrics are not suffering, but they are actually gaining because the stock market seems to appreciate it. I, again, it's a fascinating result and would be counterintuitive to a lot of people who don't want to divulge a great deal. I imagine, though, it's not just the the quantity of information that you're divulging, but the but the, the quality, the kinds of metrics. So do you look further at which kinds of metrics are most associated with uh, greater future value? Well, as I mentioned, uh, first of all, I would re always recommend to look at uh, retention rates, or depending on the kind of business you're in, you might want to look at inter-purchase rates, which, which kind of mimics how long it takes the customer to, to come back. And what I would like to mention, if you report those metrics to others, you also report it internally, and very likely you will um, force everyone to take more care of, of, of those metrics. So take another example, if we look at customer satisfaction or net promoter scores, uh, most companies take a huge effort in terms of collecting that kind of uh, information. Usually it's quite costly, it's a kind of um, intim uh, um, difficult to ask your customers. Uh, you always have those situations you pay and at the same time you can make a decision how good that service was and you're standing in front of that employee. And I mean, this is a little bit itchy. Uh, essentially, you would like to collect those metrics because they are kind of early warning uh, indicators, meaning if customer satisfaction goes down, very likely your customer is not happy and obviously the result will be it's less likely that a customer will come back. So you put in a lot of effort collecting those metrics. I mean, that's not bad, but what I would recommend, if you have a good customer analytics system, you could measure retention rate, you could measure inter-purchase times, and you would also get the, a very good indication about how happy your customers are, and they would also serve as an early warning uh, indicator.